Chapter 15 The Third Tarot Card, The Empress This card is called The Empress and also The Sun, Horns, the vivifying principle of the universe. It is represented as a woman seated and seeing full face. She is seated upon the throne of the sun and has two great wings. In her right hand is an escutcheon bearing a upright eagle. With outspread wings, while in her left hand she holds a scepter surmounted by a globe and the symbol of Venus. She is crowned with either twelve stars or a crown with twelve points. This card as a whole symbolizes the ultimate triumph of the generative force when balanced, lifted up and purified by the Son of Righteousness, seated on the throne of this world and crowned with the twelve signs of the zodiac the eagle is Scorpio, the snake of generative force lifted up into regeneration, or freed from its perverted aspects and able to soar upward to the sun. The scepter crowned by die symbol of Venus is the power of motherhood, through which she rules and uplifts the generative force. It also indicates that only through the feminine principles of love, intuition, and obedience to the forces of the zodiac can the empress reign in freedom and love. Again, as the eagle is also the symbol of the soul and the scepter the symbol of life, together they indicate the Holy Ghost, the magnetic force of divine love permeating humanity and attracting mankind back to Godhood and the divine marriage. Even as men and women are attracted by a lower manifestation of the same force in ordinary marriage. The crown, whose twelve points represent the twelve stars, indicates the path and the power by which humanity can gather up and utilize the twelve forces of the zodiac, but only as the great mother force of love is enthroned in the sun, and the soul, like the eagle, is free to seek its home in the radiant light of divine love. It also indicates that when generation is sanctified and illumined by the spiritual sun, it will be crowned with the twelve powers of the zodiac. Then the iron rod of passion will be turned into the golden scepter of love supreme. Since the empress combines the feminine principles of love and intuition with the masculine principles of will and power, this symbol indicates that the feminine or negative force of the universe has been combined with the masculine or positive force to form the equilibrated force of the sun or collective humanity, which when it manifests these two forces in equilibrium shall rule the world. This card also indicates the sacred word Aum, the creator, preserver, and destroyer. The destruction takes place only that out of that which was vile the mighty Venus Urania may recreate higher and better manifestations. This card therefore symbolizes hieroglyphically, the conveyor of the life force, cabalistically, understanding, astronomically, Venus as the spouse of Mars, the conveyor of the life force to Earth. The Third Commandment Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, law, thy God in vain, for the Lord, law, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Exodus 27 According to P. Christian, to pronounce a word is to evoke a thought and make it present. The magnetic potency of human speech is the commencement of every manifestation in the occult world. To utter a name is not only to define a being, an entity, but to place it under, and condemn it through the emission of the word, verbum, to the influence, one or more occult potencies. Things are, for every one of us, that which it, the word, makes them while naming them. The word, verbum, or the speech of every man is, quite unconsciously to himself, a blessing or a curse, they are, in a certain sense, either venomous or health-giving, according to the hidden influence attached by the supreme wisdom to their elements, that is to say, 
to the letters which compose them and the numbers correlative to these letters. This is strictly true as an esoteric teaching accepted by all the Eastern schools of occultism. The name referred to in the commandment is not Jehovah nor the name of any one divine being, but embraces every expression of the divine creative potency. It is fitting that ten should be commandment number three, since three is a symbol of the Trinity or the threefold expression of the law of thy good manifesting in all things. This name or signature of the divine law is always expressed as a trinity, a divine ideation, b its outpouring into manifestation or embodiment, and c the result produced. In its largest sense, therefore, the name of the Lord thy God comprises all the expressions by which the forces back of manifestation and evolution can be invoked. This is the ineffable name or expression which man is unable to pronounce in its fullness until he is more than man. While man is the only animal with the power of expressing his conceptions and articulate speech, nevertheless the vibrations of the creative word which brought all things into manifestation reach down into every kingdom of nature and compose the mighty army of the voice. It is through these vibrations, invoked by man through the use of words and tones, that man affects every kingdom and awakens vibrations corresponding to his words and tones. These vibrations either help to harmonize, evolve, and perfect all expressions of the law, Lord, or they help to create inharmony and resistance to the law which must result in disintegration and death instead of integration and life. All words, like the sacred Aon, contain the trinity or number three manifesting as the forces of creation, preservation, and disintegration. If the forms in the lower kingdoms did not die and disintegrate as a result of their response to the unharmonized, hence antagonistic vibrations awakened and sent forth by man, this world would long since have become a vast pandemonium of discordant, hideous sounds and terrifying noises. Since every word uttered invokes the manifestation of certain of the potencies of the three or the divine trinity, words which pervert the reality which they should express, words which do not embody and express truth, harmony, and love, as well as words which definitely invoke and express inharmony, slander, and evil, carry with them the seeds of disintegration and death, and therefore take the name of the Lord thy God, law of divine love and harmony, in vain. It is a most important task for the aspirant who would be more than man, as well as for the man who would be master of himself and his environment, both to speak words that are true and have back of them the potent and constructive forces of good, also to make the tones of his voice express the truth and sincerity of his heart. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the DAV of judgment, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Since every letter of every word we speak has a numerical value, and since numerals are symbols of the cosmic expression of divine realities, whose manifestation normally should and ultimately must obey the divine law of harmony under the guidance of, one of the ten Sephiroth, all misused words will inevitably set up in harmony. And in the process of bringing harmony out of such perversions, the great law of karma will not hold him, i.e., the one speaking the false or inharmonious words, guiltless. Therefore, while cursing and blaspheming may be called the extreme of taking the name of the Lord in vain, nevertheless we take that name in vain in the many lesser degrees indicated above. While none of us are guiltless, yet the karmic law meets out exact justice to all. 
the great mass of humanity who thoughtlessly and ignorantly take the name in vain suffer from the results in a general way through the inharmonies expressed through nature i e climatic conditions storms earthquakes disease germs the antagonism of die lower kingdoms etc and all the various disintegrating manifestations of the army of the voice still those who willfully and with malice in their hearts slander lie curse blaspheme and defy the lord their god either as a supreme being or as their fellow men made in his image literally defy the law of their good and hence will reap a personal karma of inharmony suffering disease disintegration and death commensurate with the forces they as creators have thus invoked to manifest through them while the law cannot hold us guiltless until by a full understanding and determined effort we have fully grasped its mighty truth and become one with it until we have lived it and expressed the name in all its aspects in our flesh nevertheless the law rewards in exact justice every effort toward manifesting its harmony and love through the right use of speech through speech that is true kind and loving every false or inharmonious expression that is conquered and replaced by a true and harmonious one is like a radiant star in the firmament of our lives which will not be extinguished but will go on shedding upon us light life and power until the sun of righteousness shall rise and flood all our world with the light the new day